So that was it plugged in. Whoa! Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. Can you guess what would come wrapped in a thin layer of bubble wrap and an even thinner plastic bag? That's right, a very sensitive piece of glassware. And that, of course, is my EEPROM eraser from China. When I open the drawer, it doesn't have a knob. It looks like it's got a hole for a knob, but it's full of dangerous broken glass of brokenness. Um, that in itself makes this video a little bit problematic. So I think I've just got to go grab a piece of equipment. I've got myself a dirty tray from the kitchen, the kind that my kids have their chips cooked on, which is of course totally suitable for put covering in small shards of glass. But I'm going to knock out some of this stuff here. So you can imagine my joy when I felt the box because I was like, oh, I knew what it would be. And I was like, wow, this has got such little wrapping on it. I, how do they ever expect the lamp not to self-destruct? And there's your answer. They've got no idea. So I've raised a, a thing with eBay, which may or may not work out. So there's a problem I feel with eBay. If you say the item has arrived but broken, I think that gives the vendor the opportunity to say, no problem, send it back to us and we'll refund you the money. Uh, but you've got to send it back tracked. And then you go to the post office and they say, to send this back tracked is going to cost you a million pounds for something that you paid like a tenner for. And then the uh, you never do anything with it. And I, I kind of feel that's part of their strategy, to be honest with you. Um, your only other option, of course, because it's not signed, so you never got it in the first place. But for me, that seems a bit too criminally. I don't like, you know, being a bit naughty on things like that, uh, even though the end result is what I would say, justice. So uh, I've, uh, I've said it's broken and let's see what they say. Now this says it's a F4T5. I mean, you might just be able to read that on this bit of glass if the camera can even focus on that. But yeah, F4T5. So that is a lamp that you can probably get locally if you're just happy enough with that. So for example, if they refund this, I'll probably just find that lamp. Um, if I were going to find the lamp, then I would have to replace it inside this unit. And we can start to see how one could do that. Um, of course, it has got a uh, American plug on it. So we'd have to deal with that as well. So I do have an adapter and I do think I'm going to have a look inside and we're going to see what we can see with this. Um, if it's feasible to change a lamp, then great, go ahead. <laughs> if you've got one in this broken condition and you decide you're going to change a lamp, you probably ought to just uh, keep watching because what I'm going to do before uh, doing anything with this is to test out the remaining parts of it to see if any of it actually seems to work because there's no point trying to fix it and change the lamps and do all those things if the rest of it's shite. Um, and I can tell you from the quality of all of the bits and bobs, it's really bad. Um, but it's interesting to think that there's such a global market that you have a company that produces such a cheap commoditized EEPROM eraser. You're like, who's buying these? Um, Okay, there's our three screws so far. Trying not to get the little tiny bits of glass under your, oh, the knob fell off, uh, under your fingernails. You don't want that. And I'm just gonna put a bit of pressure. Oh, more glass coming out, good. It's all coming out everywhere. There's the last screw. That's the last screw. Um, and we'll just keep at it. It does have stuff in it. It does actually have a kind of a lamp holder. Let's... Oh, and I was wondering why the tray wouldn't pull out. There's all mechanisms. I will show you this all, don't worry. Um, I feel I just want to shake out that last bit of glass. Right, let's remove the components we want to keep and push this tray away and go for a deep dive. Boom. So, <clears throat> the innards. And I'm going to leave it in the on position because we might mess around with it. So we'll leave it in the on. And the on power switch goes straight from the mains to, it looks like a timer. It's a mechanical timer and there's your knob. So you could change your knob. You could make this digital timer. You could do what you like, to be honest with you. It's your thing. And then inside, um, 
pretty much just uh, an igniter and ballast circuit, as far as I can tell. And we'll have a look on the other side. It's, it's just a very simple, you know, you can see there, circuit there. Because you need to agitate and excite. Is sir uh, agitated? Is sir uh, excited? Indeed, sir uh, is. Um, something interesting I just noticed on the lamp I'm going to show you is that they seem to have just soldered straight to it, which is a little bit unusual. You see, don't expect you to uh, change that. So that's the positions of such things. Interestingly, look, this center, this center thing on the transformer there hasn't even got solder on it, so I don't know what that's about. Didn't need it, didn't bother putting it on. But you can have a look at the wires in case yours came with wires. Oh, well, look, there's a lovely piece of glass there waiting for me, so I'm glad I picked that up. So I think what we're going to do is plug this in and actually try it. And I kind of think I'm going to leave these exposed ends without their glass envelope and we'll see what happens to them too because that'll be exciting, won't it? And just before I go any further, because it might be a destructive test, we should probably measure the lamp and the lamp measures about 130 would be my guess, but it depends where it's supposed to sit in this holder. So if you're looking for a replacement, we do know it's that uh, T whatever I said earlier. So we're going to get this to the US model. We have the plug all ready to go. If you recall, I left this turned on and I'm going to get my multimeter ready in case we need to do some multimetering. And here goes. Let's get this sitting back down there, out of the way. And I'm kind of covering my eyes. Um, I know you don't see that, but I do kind of put my hand in front of my eyes when I plug stuff like this in. Uh, so that was it plugged in. Whoa! <laughs> and you saw it instantly burn itself out. I'm just trying to listen if I can hear the timer though. I don't know if I can hear the timer. Um, I'm kind of worried though to put probes on this to see now if there's voltage. So how do we know if this is working? I think we need a clamp current uh, meter and we'll put it on the cable. My clamp current meter doesn't show anything. I think the timer seems to be working. So if we want to play with this anymore, I'm going to have to try to hook up this thing. And all I've got is this 13 watt lamp. I kind of feel, oh, is that a bit rattly? Bloody hell, don't tell me this is broken. Um, I got sent a box of these by mistake once and the sender didn't want him back. So I've always wondered what I could do with them. So I'm going to hook this up. Guess this is how you're going to change the bulbs yourself anyway. So I've made this. I'm actually quite scared because I had to extend the wires. So it's all a bit precarious, but it's okay. I've put a screwdriver here and a tweezers here so it won't roll off by accident. Let's zoom out maximum. You can see it all. I'm going to make sure it's turned to on. This uh, switch actually has an on position as well as a timer. So you can leave it permanently on. So I don't know, let's just leave it on for now. And I'm going to plug it in. Three, two, one. Aha! Aha! There you go. That wasn't too bad, was it? I don't know why I was so scared. Clearly it works. I'm just looking closely. I thought I saw some smoke, but it's probably just some dust. Hmm. So why don't I uh, try the timer out? So that's off, and I'm going to time it for the tiniest amount I can get away with. And then I don't really know how long that's supposed to be. So let's see what that might be. That could be a fraction of a minute, maybe up to a minute. Who knows what the, um, the resolution of that is. But basically, I think um, we're pretty sure that's really entirely just a ballast for the light. So if you go into your own uh, Home Depot, B&Q, whichever country you're in, whatever your store is, you can get a fluorescent tube starter ballast that you can just put in a box and run any tube. You can buy a UV tube for sure. And then this is just a timer switch, but it's mechanical. It looks fancy, but it's actually just mechanical. And just to show you, this bulb is a 13 watt standard white T5. So I don't know which the T5 determines if it's the, it's probably the diameter and maybe the wattage is determined by the length. It's going to be something, something like that. But you could look for suitable lamps. I'm going to look for a suitable one to go in this box. Uh, looking at the ends, they're all standard. I don't see any difference at all holding that up uh, to this one on the, the right end here without touching it. So the reason you need a ballast though 
is because you need to excite this gas enough so that it can ionize so an electrical path will go through it. That's why if you just get a mains lamp it won't do anything and it's, it's a bit it's a, some complication there but basically you can see there's two wires on each end they act as kind of heaters if I recall they, they're kind of doing a weird thing with those little coils they're actually kind of heating the gas and then going normally there's a dink 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 remember the old uh, fluorescent tubes in your kitchen doing that dink 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 that's putting uh, you know a uh, normally a capacitor uh, discharge across to get some sort of high voltage path to go through and then once that's ignited normally those sort of I'm going to say mechanical ballasts they would disconnect part of that circuit and then it would just keep running and this is in literally just a digital version and no, no different at all to the uh, digital things that you'd have. I can still hear this timer running away here and it's definitely not doing anything so uh, I'd have to rewind the video and actually try to inspect that to see where that's gone. I should have coloured it in a bit on the end or something. You know, put a little ink like that so we could track it. But let's let's assume it's working. I could record two endings. That worked. That didn't work. And we'll work it out from there. So in conclusion, I don't know what my conclusion was. In conclusion, this is very shitly packed. Uh, that's that's no-brainer. The technology is very simple. So in conclusion I'd say buy one if you have some sort of warranty on the shipping. Oh we didn't see how much current by the way is going through this. Buy one if you can get some warranty on the uh, shipping. Oh and it's giving us a rating, a rating, a rating of point one amp flickering. So I don't really I don't really know how uh, good these um, meters are for these these sorts of small currents. But let's see if it goes off it at least stays on zero. Um, so make sure you get some shipping insurance or something with this or a way to send it back if it comes broken or just assume it's going to be broken and you're going to have to buy a lamp separately. Uh, other than that I can't see anything wrong with it, it's just going to work. It is a bit simple, it is a bit nasty. Um, maybe be a bit... <laughs> I'm saying that touching this and it is all live. Um, be aware though that maybe the quality of the mechanical timer could be a bit rubbish. We still haven't seen this turn off. So yeah, check it out first because you don't want to leave it on assuming it's going to turn off in 15 minutes and then come back at the end of the day or something and it's been cooking your EEPROMs in here. Um, and the only thing I would probably do if this is all working is probably put a little knob on this, a little plastic knob that you could 3D print so you can open and shut the drawer. But there. Yeah. Hope that's uh, been of some use to you. If you've got one of these, please comment down below or come to my Discord channel and we'll chat about it. Like, share, subscribe. And as ever, thanks for watching. But before you go, please give a nods. I can say a nods up, a nod down. Do you, which bloody direction do you nod? Both directions. Just doff your invisible proverbial cap to the patrons.